What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another special Europe Elite interview. I am your host, Parker Rogers. But before we go any further, I just want to let y'all know, go over to our shop at EuropeSelite.com and check out the awesome hoodies, t-shirts, and many other products that we have there. We recently just launched our Europe Elite direct messaging service, so if you want to get special tips and recruiting advice and film advice from uh, top professionals in Europe, go ahead and check that out. It's really great. It only costs two euros, so I highly recommend checking that out. But without further ado, let's get into the interview. What is going on, everybody? I am Parker Rogers, and welcome to this special Europe's Elite interview. I am joined by Tyrese. Tyrese, go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Hey, guys. How's it going? How's it going? My name is Tyrese Johnson Fisher. I'm a running back from London, and I'm playing at Kapai Lincoln Community College at the moment. Awesome. So the point of this interview, uh, I reached out to you because I saw your saw a tweet that you put out about a week ago and i'd like to start out by by reading this tweet it's regarding the new uh, name image and likeness situation that's going on throughout all of college sports so i'm just going to go ahead and read that now so in your tweet you said international students have to be faced being doubted for playing a sport that we were not born playing by coaches and players we work as hard many times harder than many homegrown american football players and then we are told that if we engage in nil activities we lose our visa Why should we be treated any differently than anybody else? We bring European fans to a sport that is trying to be global rather than nationalized. We deserve to be able to profit off our name, image, and likeness as others are able to do. We need answers and we deserve equal treatment. Don't doubt how much it costs financially, physically, and mentally to leave your home country to chase your dream. The sacrifice is made in order to make it the possible happen. It costs us over $1,000 to get a visa and flights, but we do it to chase the impossible this isn't over. So Tyrese, obviously the news came out about two weeks ago that the NCAA was passing a rule that would allow all student athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. However, there's a caveat with international football players, they can lose their visa. So what was, what was your first thoughts when you saw this and started thinking about this topic? I think when I first saw it, my first initial response was finally, we finally get to profit because, you know, before I was playing um, in American football, I was, you know, playing rugby professionally and I could, you know, profit off my name and it's like, because I could basically just profit off being an athlete. And then coming back into the sport, I'm like, oh my goodness, like what the hell, you know, I've got to basically get rid of everyone that I was kind of involved with before. And then hearing this, you know, that, well, basically hearing the new rules and legislations, again, I was just so excited. But then I thought, you know what, let me do a little bit more research. And the more research I went into, I went into it, you know, I ended up coming to the realization that actually, as an international student, it doesn't benefit us as much as I first thought. So I guess when I first heard all of that, it just kind of made me a little bit angry because, you know, even those tweets, I, I think I, you know, explained it quite well in that what we have to do to get here is a lot more than, you know, what the average American has to do. Because we have to do what they have to do, but more because you've got to do initial stages to actually get there. And then we're actually there, we're doubted. We're doubted, not necessarily, not only just doubted, but we have to make a lot of financial sacrifices to be able to make a dream happen. Okay, you've got a scholarship. A scholarship doesn't matter. you still got to still, put, you know, put the initial investment in, you know, to chase your dream. And then, you know, as an international student, we have so much to pay for. Those sort of sponsorships that we're able to benefit from away from the field actually benefit us financially because it allows us both to pay for them a lot more willingly, well, not willingly, but much more comfortably. You don't have to ask parents to be able to put money forward that they can't necessarily afford. And so, when, again, we're kind of putting, put back a little bit, but I'm just hoping that, you know, with enough of us coming together, we'll be able to really start, you know, shedding light and being able to make something happen out of the situation. Exactly, exactly. It's not necessarily something that you can do easily. Like you said, there are a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. For instance, you're not always guaranteed that you're going to get a visa to come and have like an education in the United States and play football. On top of that, the whole visa application and applying for the visa costs around 510 American like American dollars, which is not like just pocket change. It's actual real money that you have to get. On top of that, you have to pay thousands of dollars for flights, uh, from for you know from Europe all the way to America, and then on top of that, you have to factor in you have to factor in the tuition for your school and everything, and it's not necessarily something that everybody can do, like you said, comfortably because of the cost 
of everything. You know, in my research, I was looking at the number of international student athletes within collegiate sports. And I came across a statistic that I think is pretty interesting. So uh, in the NCAA, 13% of D1 athletes are international. And in Division II, there's 7% uh, international student athletes. That's not factoring in Division III, NCAA Division III, the NJCAA, which is the junior college, or NAIA Division I, II, and III. So if we do some math here, there's there's about 460,000 Division I ath- student athletes. 13% of that is roughly 60,000 D1 athletes that are international. This is affecting, like people may think, oh, this is just a, such a small number. But in reality, we're it's affecting a large population of student athletes that could heavily benefit from like any type of financial compensation, financial benefits from the NIL rules. And I, I just think it's it's a little bit unfair that we're allowing, you know, like you said, like the homegrown athletes you know, that don't necessarily have to work as hard to get noticed or to get like put out there than the European athletes. So how, another, another thing that I'm, that I'm wondering, how do you hope to bring awareness to this? So you obviously you have the tweet, you got engagement, you know, it's just got a lot of people like talking about it. You got a lot of responses, but what are some other ways that you're, that you're hoping to bring an overall sense of awareness to this issue? I feel like the NCAA um, you know, obviously it's not down to the NCAA as to what happens in this this situation, but, you know, they are, or they have a lot, a much more closer contact to the embassy than we do. So, you know, if they're able to, you know, push through something, I don't know the legalities of it. I don't know how difficult or easy it may be for us to, you know, for immigration, you know, to be able to ISIS, ISIS, right, to be able to... Um, you know, get everything, you know, squared away and being able to make possible. Because I do understand how difficult it is to a degree because it's like, you know, if you end up letting international students make money Mm -hmm. and you're basically saying every international, you know, student is allowed to work, but then, you know, we we don't pay taxes. So how do you record our taxes? So to a degree, I understand that, you know, it's not something that can just be done like that. But at least if we start bringing awareness to it, then we can start looking at things that can start changing it. Because, you know, it might not be our generation that get to benefit from, you know, international students being able to actually make money abroad and, you know, in America and being able to like work and whatnot. But if it at least helps the next generation, at least we know we've done our bit. But again, it would be really nice if it was us to be able to at least benefit whilst things are going on at the moment. Right. And I totally agree. And the new rules that are put into place, they're not like the final legislation. It's not the final ruling that they have. It's just an interim uh, legislation that they have regarding the, the, the whole NIL situation. So as they're finalizing, they answer finalizing the next you know, final draft of the legislation and of the, the rules on what they want and what they can get through the NIL, you know, you're hoping to bring at least some awareness, some sort of um, action towards the, uh, towards the, the international community. So you know, I think that's a really great cause. You know, sure. I, was, I was reading uh, part of what the NCAA stated in their legislation was that international student athletes are covered by the inter, like the uh, the interim policy that they have instituted already, but they should some, they should consult with uh, government agencies for guidance on visa issues and tax implications. Like you said, international students don't pay taxes, and they're on an F one visa, which means that they are it's a student visa, and that they can have part time work, but they can't uh like make a how they said like make a living from it you know what's the the biggest call like the biggest form of change that you would like to see happen other than just like the you know like the whole issue with like being paid like what's like the the overall like want from you for the whole international community coming over to try and pursue their dreams of playing american football well in regards to this situation i'd love it if there was you know something written that would allow international student athletes and obviously you would have to prove what you're doing international student athletes to be able to actually make money in the u.s not just the whole country the home country of course i have aspirations for me being an american football player i have aspirations for international students to be able to compete on the same level um, on a much wider scale, that's another topic. But I do definitely feel like there is 
there are solutions. Um, we're working on a couple of things, you know, behind behind everything, just seeing what we can do and whatnot. But I do believe that there will be opportunities for us to be able to still benefit from this legis these legislations because, you know, we can still we can still sign deals back home. You know, right. we can speak to academic advisors and uh, sorry, international um ad international advisors at our colleges and they can create us you know temporary visas um well temporary w5 i think they are right. so there are a couple of things that can be done but just something that's you know a lot a much more sustainable and that can benefit the wider majority and you know again for the longevity of also just have to hope and pray you know yeah just looking at the long term rather than like the temporary like fixes like you were talking about you know we cool. we can't we cater to to we cater to the youth. We cater to the uh, to the high school the, to the high school level of people trying to make it to America to come play high school to come to come play college football. So, in your experience, just um, you know, you started out playing you professional rugby. Now you're playing uh, you're now you're playing college football in America. What's some you know moving away from the NIL stuff? What's some advice that you have for like the young players like that are trying to pursue their dream that are trying to come over and now like integrated with this whole NIL deal? Just like what's some advice that you have for them? Like what's like something that you would like send them off with, you know, something that you something that you could give them through your experience. I'd say from my experience, and this is not just football related. I was lucky that I went viral in 2015, and I was able to you know benefit from being in the public eye quite early. And from what I learned from a young age is be wary. A lot of people will always try to you know use you. A lot of people will try and sell you things in order to take advantage of you so it's just being it's being wary and it's having a strong team around you and i mean a strong team have a good set of friends that you trust have a good set of family that you trust and you can't tell everyone your next move because if you tell someone your next move they're going to check me so it's always being aware and it's being vigilant it's having a plan when i went to coastal in 2018 you know, we had a couple of, you know, we had a couple of plans of how we wanted to approach the future, what we wanted to do in order to, you know, get to our next level on a social level and on, on the social platforms. And it's, it's, you know, having the team around you that can help you do that because you're going to have so many people trying to sell you X, Y, Z, but you don't know what their best interests are at heart. But if you know your family, you know your friends, you know they're gonna, you know they love you no matter what, and you know they've been with you for many years and for some most cases for your entire life. They understand you a lot better than somebody that's probably known you for two months. So, yeah, the advice that I'll give honestly is just learn, trust your instincts, and just don't let people take advantage of you. You know, always have the upper hand. Yeah, keep your circle small and keep your keep your goals, you know, in your circle. You can't let other people, you, know, you can't like let all the outside influences get in. You just got to keep to yourself, head down and power forward. So what's next yeah. for you, man? What's, you know, what, what can we expect coming up, you know, football wise, advocacy for international students through the, through the NIL? Like, what can we expect, man? Right now, I'm just trying to get in go mode. I've got my season coming up in the second of September. I've been waiting for a very long time to be able to, you know, play ball again since Stephen Coastal 2019. So, you know, now that I've had it, if I had two, I've, had, I've missed out on two seasons through COVID. So now it's just, it's time to ball. It's time to go. Come December, hopefully committing to, to somewhere that's very suitable to myself. So, you know, it's basically converting Juco back to D1 again. So now it's time to just get up and get going. Where are you hoping to where are you hoping to land D1? Power five? Like what are we looking at here? I feel like anything that suits um, you know, that's the right situation for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to close off any options. I feel like there are a couple of schools I've got my eye on, but I definitely do feel that, you know, it's just about choosing the right situation for myself that would just allow me to take my next, you know, take my talents to the next level into the NFL. Yes, sir. Man, I love I love to hear it. I really do. Thank you so much for for uh, for talking with me. You know, bringing light to this to this uh, this situation because you know it's it's a lot. There's a lot of gray area here. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know. A lot of stuff mm. that, that that can be done to further better uh, the experience for international students coming over to America to play football. 
So Tyrese, cool. thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you coming on and just talking with me, man. No, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, man. Hey, no problem.